Okay, so this is part two of lecture two, where we will be discussing notarian spaces and notarian rings. Um, you'll start by recalling what a notarian ring is. Um, so a notarian ring is a ring satisfying any one of the following three equivalent conditions. First of all, every ideal is finitely generated. Um, secondly, every non-empty set of ideals has a maximal element. And thirdly, every chain of increasing ideals is eventually constant. In other words, I n equals I n plus one equals I n plus two and so on for some n. Um, so the basic example of a notarian ring is the ring of polynomials kx1 up to xn in n variables. So this was originally proved by Hilbert um, at the near the end of the 19th century. So Emmy Noether found a rather easier proof of this. Um, what Noether showed was that if R is notarian, this implies that the ring of polynomials in R is also notarian. And since a field is trivially notarian, um, by repeatedly applying this, we see that all polynomial rings over fields are also notarian. Um, so we'll just quickly review the proof that um, R of X is notarian. So this is a proof of R notarian implying R of X notarian. I'll do a fairly brief sketch of the proof. So we look at the ideals I naught contained in I1, contained in I2, and so on, where I n is equal to the leading coefficients of else of degree n, degree less than or equal to n in, in I, where I is an ideal of R of X. So we've chosen an ideal I of R of X and we're trying to find a finite set of generators for it. Since R is notarian, this stabilizes. This means that I big N equals I, oops, I N plus one and so on for some N. And now what we do is we um, take sets of polynomials. Let's call these sets S naught, S one up to S N, where S naught um, have degree naught and the, the, the leading coefficients generate I naught. S1 are polynomials of degree one whose leading coefficients generate I1 and so on all the way up to Sn. Um, whose leading coefficients generate I n. Then you can check that S naught, S1 up to S n uh, generate the ideal I. Should have said we take finite sets here. 
which we can do because the ring R is material. Um, so if you fill in the details, this string of polynomials and variables is notarian. Um, well, that's notarian rings. We're now going to discuss notarian topological spaces. So a topological space is called notarian if equivalently um, so um, either the closed sets satisfy the descending chain condition What this means is that any decreasing set, any decreasing sequence, um, C0 contains C1, contains C2, and so on, of closed sets, stabilizes. So Cn equals Cn plus 1 equals Cn plus 2, etc., for some n. Or um, equivalently, any any non-empty collection of closed sets has a minimal element. So you see, these are sort of duals of the conditions we had for notarian rings. So notarian rings, the ideals satisfied an ascending chain condition, and any non-empty collection of ideals had a maximal element. Um, and a consequence of the theorem we proved is that An with the Zariski topology is notarian. And the reason for that is that closed sets of a n correspond, and that should be a capital N, correspond to some ideals of the coordinate ring k x1 up to x n. Because the any closed set is determined by the ideal of um, functions vanishing on it. Um, so if there's um, a descending chain of closed sets of A, and this gives you an ascending chain of ideals, which must be um, eventually. So, so affine over any field is a notarian topological space. Um, I should point out that notarian spaces are weird. if you're used to looking at topological spaces in analysis. Um, so first of all, the notarian condition is equivalent to saying every open set is compact. This is a easy exercise, which I won't bother writing out. Um, by the way, in algebraic geometry, the word compact sometimes instead. So what's the difference between compact sets and quasi-compact sets? Well, there isn't any difference at all. What happened was um, we have this definition of compact and Bourbaki decided that all useful compact spaces were Hausdorff, so he changed the definition of compact so that compact in Bourbaki means compact and Hausdorff. And then shortly afterwards, they discovered that there actually were some compact spaces that weren't Hausdorff, so they had to invent a new word for it, quasi-compact. Um, a rule of thumb is whenever you see the word quasi in mathematics, it's a sort of indication that somebody somewhere really screwed up the terminology and 
had to put in the word quasi to try and fix it. Anyway, what you notice is that in analysis, open sets are almost never compact unless they happen to be finite. Um, in fact, you can easily check that if a, if a space is Noetherian and Hausdorff, this implies it is in fact finite. So since most naturally occurring spaces interesting. So all your um topological spaces you often get an analysis. Um, um, so there's one um, concept that occurs quite a lot for Noetherian spaces, which is a set is called irreducible um, if and only if it is non-empty and not a union of two proper closed subsets. So I should have said a not a set of topological space, but never mind. Um, now this is a completely useless concept for Hausdorff spaces because you can easily check that the only irreducible Hausdorff spaces are single points. Um, however, it turns out to be very useful in algebraic geometry. So if you remember the picture we had of A2, a typical closed set of A2 looks something like this. So it's a bunch of curves and a bunch of points. And the curves are in fact irreducible. Um, for instance, an affine line is irreducible because any two closed sets any two non-empty closed sets intersect, which easily implies that an affine line can't be written as a union of two proper closed subsets. And if you look at this space, you can see it seems to be the union of a finite number of irreducible subsets, where the irreducible subsets And this took very liberty of all notarian spaces. So we have the following theorem, which says any Noetherian space is a union of irreducible um, subspaces. I should have said finite union. Um, so um, this means you can reduce the study of Noetherian spaces to the study of irreducible Noetherian spaces. Um, and this um, follows quite easily by induction. In fact, it follows by something called Noetherian induction. So Noetherian induction means you pick a maximal um, closed set um, of some collection of closed sets. So um, what we're going to show is that every, so we're going to prove by Noetherian induction that every closed subset is finite union of irreducibles. If not, pick a maximal counterexample, sorry, a minimal counterexample C. It's very easy to get maximal and minimal modeled up because for ideals, Noetherian condition says there's a maximal element of any set. And for spaces, the Noetherian condition says there's a minimal element of every set. So uh, it's one of these things you constantly get muddled up about. So now there are two cases. C might be irreducible, or it might be not irreducible. 
Well, if it's irreducible, we're done because we get a contradiction. And if it's not irreducible, then we can write C is equal to C1 union C2, where C1 and C2 are smaller closed subsets. Well, then by induction, by Noetherian induction, C1 and C2 are finite unions of irreducibles. And if C1 and C2 are finite unions of irreducibles, then so is C. And this again gives a contradiction. So by assuming that there was a closed subset that's not a finite union of irreducibles, we obtain a contradiction. Therefore, every closed subset, in particular the whole space, is a finite union of irreducible subsets. So as an application of this, every algebraic set is a finite union of irreducible algebraic sets. Now, irreducible algebraic sets are sort of called algebraic varieties. So variety sort of means irreducible. Um, so we can provisionally define an algebraic variety as being an irreducible closed subset of affine space. Well, that's actually not quite right. The, 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 there's a slight problem we run into. Um, so let's give a few examples of this. Well, suppose you take the variety x, y equals 1. So this is just a nice hyperbola. And suppose we take another example. Let's take the set of points in A1 with, um, let's take the set of non-zero points in A1. So here, we're just taking non-zero points in A1. Now, um, um, in some sense, this is, this is not an algebraic variety because it's, a, it's not a closed subset of the affine line. However, it's sort of more or less the same as, as the hyperbola because you can map the hyperbola to this just by mapping uh, a point x, y to the x coordinate there. And this is a sort of one to one mapping. So, in some sense, the set of non zero points of A1 should be considered an algebraic variety, even though it's not quite a closed subset. So, this definition of algebraic variety is kind of provisional. We'll give a slightly better definition later on. Um, so, let's have some other examples of irreducible components. So, so we take uh, an algebraic set defined by two equations, x squared plus y squared minus c squared equals naught, and 2x squared minus y squared minus z squared. Uh, so that should be x squared plus y squared minus 2z squared and 2x squared minus y squared minus z squared equals naught. And so these are two cones and we're taking the intersection. And the question is, how does this um, decompose into irreducible subsets? Well, it's the union of four irreducible subsets. Uh, so the irreducible subsets x equals y equals z, x equals minus y equals z, x equals minus y equals minus c, 
and x equals y equals minus c. So it's just four lines. So it's quite common for intersection of irreducible subsets to be non-irreducible. You see, these are both um, irreducible, but their intersection decomposes as four lines. Um, another example, you've got to be a bit careful about the relation between being irreducible and being connected. So for example, if we take x, y equals zero, it's just the union of the x-axis and the y-axis. So this is reducible, but connected. On the other hand, if we take x, y equals one, it looks like this. And this is irreducible, And it certainly looks as if it's disconnected. Well, whether it's connected or not depends on which topology you're using. So it's connected in the Zariski topology. However, it's obviously disconnected in the usual Euclidean topology. So when you talk about things being connected, you've got to be a little bit careful about which topology you're talking about. Um, so um, that's all for, I want to say, about Noetherian spaces for the moment. So the uh, next part of the lecture will be on the Hilbert null Stellensatz, which explains the relation between algebraic sets and ideals in more detail.